one. So let's take a look at number one. It says consider the function. We have to find f of negative 2. So we want to see which piece does negative 2 belong to. Is negative 2 greater than 4? Is negative 2 greater than 4? No. no, so not the first one. Is negative 2 in between 0 and 4? Yeah. No. no, so not the second one. Is negative 2 less than 0? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to plug that into the third piece. So we have negative 2 minus 3. What's negative 2 minus 3? One. Negative 5. Oh, so our answer here would be D. For the next one, number two, it says how many solutions do we have? Let's find them. Let's line up our equations. We have 6a plus 3b is equal to 12, and 6a minus 3b is equal to 12. We can combine these equations by elimination because the b's are already the same but opposite, so those will eliminate. What's 6a plus 6a? 12a and 12a is equal to, 12 plus 12 is? 24. 24. To solve for a, we divide by 12. So a is equal to? 2. So once we find a, we take that and plug it back into our equation to find b. So we're going to have one solution. Since we only found one answer, we have one solution. If we were combining these together and we get 0 equals 0, this would mean we have infinite solutions. If we get, let's say, 0 equals a number, 0 equals 6, something that's not 0. Does 0 equal 6? Mm -hmm. Nope. So this would be no solutions. So if you get an answer, this is one solution. If we had 0 equals 0, that would be infinite solutions. Or if 0 equals a number, that would be no solution. For 3 and 4, to tell whether the ordered pair is a solution, we plug them in. So 1 is x and 3, we plug into y. So we have 1 minus 3. Is that negative 2? Yep. Negative 2 equals negative 2. So it works in the first one, but we also have to check in the second one. 3 times 1 minus 3 is equal to negative 2. 3 times 1 would be 3 minus 3. What's 3 minus 3? Zero. 0. Does 0 equal negative 2? No. So since it doesn't work in the second one, it is not a solution of the ordered pair. So you have to plug it into both. All right, let's take a look at five. We want to solve the system of linear equations and check your solution. So anything that says solve, you could work backwards with your answer choice if it's multiple choice plug it into the question and see if it makes sense. Or if you know how to solve systems of equations, we can do it that way. So here, it's set up perfectly for elimination. Our x's are already the same number but opposites. So they cancel. So we're just going to add everything else together. What's y plus y? One, three. Two y. And 30 plus 6 would be 36. Divide both sides by 2, so y is equal to 18. We're solving by elimination. So since the x's are already the same number but opposites, you can just combine them together. Which one of our answer choices says that y is 18? A. a. So we don't even need to do any more work. We already know that our answer is A. You can plug it into one of the equations and you'll get that x is going to be 12. What about for number 6? 
Here, we don't have the same number but opposites yet, so we have to multiply to make it the same number but opposite. So I can multiply everything in the second equation by two. That way my y's will then be the same but opposites. So my new second equation is negative 14x minus 2y is equal to negative 18. We can combine that with the first, which is negative 2x plus 2y is equal to 2. Are the y's the same but opposites now? Yep, so they cancel. Negative 2x minus 14x would be negative 16x is equal to negative 16. Divide by negative 16. So x is equal to 1. Which one of our answer choices say that x is 1? A and D. So we'd have to plug it back in to see what y is going to be. So we have negative 7 times 1 minus y is equal to negative 9. We can add 7 to move it to the other side. So negative y is equal to negative 2. So y is equal to 2. So that would be answer choice D. So sometimes it doesn't work out where you only have to find 1. Because here x was 1 in A and D. So we had to find y also. So you just plug it back in to find y. All right, let's look at 12. To solve the equation, check your solution. So here, we just want to solve for x. We want to get x all by itself. So move the x's to one side, the constant numbers to the other side. First thing we do for number 12 is distribute. So 2x minus 12 is equal to negative 7x minus 3. We want to move the x's to one side, so I'm going to add 7x to move it to the left and move the numbers to the other side, so I'm going to add 12 to move it to the right. 2x plus 7x would be 9x. Negative 3 plus 12 is 9. Divide both sides by 9. x is equal to 1. So that would be answer choice C. So that's the same for all of these equations. You just want to get x all by itself. Let's do 13. So here I'm going to add 7x to move it to the other side. But it actually cancels out on both sides. So then we're just left with 3 is equal to 3. Does 3 equal 3? Is this true? Yes. So what do you think our answer would be? <clears throat> all real numbers. So when you get a true statement, it's all real numbers. We don't have an x, so we can't say x is equal to. It'd be all real numbers because 3 equals 3. If you got 3 equals 4, what do you think our answer would be? Does 3 equal 4? No It'd be no solution because that wouldn't be a true statement. All right, on the next page, let's do 15. What's 8 to the power of 0? What's anything to the power of zero? Not zero. One. Anything to the power of zero is one. What does a negative exponent do? Makes it a fraction. So this would be one over seven. So that would be answer choice A. And then for 17, what's the square root of nine? Three. Here we're not solving. So remember when we solve and we take the square root of both sides, we need the plus or minus. Here you're just taking the square root, so it'd just be three. Let's do let's do nineteen. So we want to simplify. What does a negative exponent do? Makes it a fraction. So that r is going to go in the, the bottom of our fraction, in the denominator. Negative 4 is just a negative number, so that's just going to stay on top. It's not a negative exponent, so we're not going to move it. r to the power of negative 8 is going to go on the bottom, and it's going to turn positive. Now what's s to the power of 0? 1. So it cancels, and it's just 1. So our answer would be negative 4 over r to the 8th power. So that would be a.
All right, let's look at 22. When we multiply, we add the exponents together. So this would be b to the 11th power. So that would be c. When we have a power raised to a power in 23, what do we do? Multiply. So this would be x to the 45th power. So that would be a. And then for 25, again, we have a power raised to a power, but we have to distribute the exponent. So this would be 5 to the 3rd power times d to the 4th power to the 3rd power. What's 5 to the 3rd power? Anybody remember? Let's look at our answer choices. What do we think that 5 to the 3rd power is? 125. And then d to the power of 4 times 3 would be d to the 12th power. So what answer choice would that be? D. Right, 26, find the degree of the monomial. 26 has no exponent, so our degree would be 0. When you have two exponents, you just add them together. So here, our degree would be 6. And then same thing for 28. We just have one exponent, so the degree is 6. So degree is the exponent. Find the sum. You just combine like terms. So y plus 3y would be 4y. 5 minus 9 would be negative 4. So that would be answer choice D. What do we have to do when we find the difference, when we subtract? What's the difference between adding and subtracting? What's the first thing we have to do when we subtract? So for number 31, what would the first thing we do be? For 31, we want to distribute the negative to everything behind it. So it becomes plus 5 and minus 3d. Then we just combine like terms. So we have negative 3d to the second power. d minus 3d would be negative 2d. And then negative 3 plus 5 would be plus 2. So that would be answer choice A. Any questions here? Right, next page. Find the product. Here we just FOIL. So multiply the first, the outer, the inner, and the last. So m times m would be m squared. m times 3 would be 3m. Negative 4 times m would be negative 4m, and negative 4 times 3 would be negative 12. So this would be m squared minus m minus 12, which would be answer choice A. What would we do for something like 36 if it's b minus 11 to the second power? How would we FOIL that for 36? We don't just square b and square 11 because it's b minus 11 squared. So it's the whole thing to the second power. We write it twice and FOIL it out. So it's b minus 11 times b minus 11, then you FOIL. So when you FOIL that out, you'll end up with d. So same thing for 37. Write it twice, FOIL it out. 38, FOIL. 39. Here we're solving the equation. We did this in the last chapter. We set both things equal to zero and just solve. So t is equal to zero and t plus five equals zero. So we subtract five on both sides. t is equal to negative five. So that would be a. 
So just set each part equal to zero. Same thing with 40. Set each piece equal to zero and solve. For 41, we have to get rid of that squared. So we're going to square root both sides. So P plus 8 is equal to 0. Remember, when you take the square root of both sides, you need plus or minus. But here, plus or minus 0 is still just 0. Then we'd subtract 8. P is equal to negative 8. B. On the next page, 42. Set them both equal to 0. 43. We want to get x all by itself. So we're going to divide by 49. So x to the second power is equal to 25 over 49. How do we get rid of that second power? What would we do to get x all by itself? Square root it. And what do we have to remember when we take the square root of both sides? Plus or minus. So we have positive and negative. What's the square root of 25? 5. And what's the square root of 49? 7. Yeah. So our answer would be D. We have positive and negative 5 over 7. For 45, it says use the graph to solve the system of equations. So where our two lines intersect, that is our answer. So this point would be 1, 3. So that would be the answer. So you're just looking for the intersection. So 47, we're graphing the inequality. Here we have x is greater than negative 2. So we're going to go to negative 2 on the x, and we put a line here. Since it's greater than, it's a dotted line. So for inequalities, if it's just greater than or less than, this gets a dotted line. If it is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, it gets a solid line. And then we have to pick a number and see which way we're going to shade. So we could pick anything. Let's pick 0, 0. So if I plugged in 0 into x, is 0 greater than negative 2? Is that true? Is 0 greater than negative 2? Yeah. yeah, it's true. So we shade on the right side of the graph. We shade where numbers are greater than negative 2. For 48, we do the same thing. When we graph our line, we want to graph it in y equals mx plus b form, so slope-intercept form. Negative 2 would be our slope, and 2 would be our b. So you always start by plotting the b first, our y-intercept. You cross the y-axis at 2. And then to do the slope of negative 2, be negative 2 over 1. So remember, that's rise over run. Our rise, we're going down two and to the right one. Down two to the right one. This would be a solid line because it's less than or equal to. And then we can plug in a point and see where we're going to shade. So let's plug in zero, zero. So when we plug in 0, 0, we're going to plug in 0 into the x and the y. So 0 is less than or equal to, what's negative 2 times 0? 0. So 0 is less than or equal to 2. Is this true? Yeah, 0 is less than 2. So we're going to shade where 0 is, so this way.
because it's an inequality, so that less than or equal to, you have to shade. Yep. On the next page, it says determine whether the table represents linear or exponential functions. So linear, the x and y increase at the same rate. So x is going up by 1, and y is going up by 4 each time. So plus 1, plus 1. So this would be linear. So because these are the same... It's linear. But for the next one, these are going up by 1 for the x's. And the y's are increasing. We're adding 2 here. We're adding 4 here. We're adding 8 here. So this would be exponential because it's growing faster than just being constant. This would be an exponential function. For first section of part two, we're factoring. So the first thing we always want to do when we factor is take out the GCF. So our GCF, look at all your answer choices. Our GCF is probably going to be six because that's what it is in each answer choice. And let's see if it has to include a Z. Both of these have a Z in it. So our GCF is going to be 6Z. And then when we take out a 6Z, we're left with Z minus 7. So that would be answer choice C. We divide this by 6Z. Same thing with number 2. Take out the GCF. Number three, we don't have a GCF, so we just factor it normally. What are two factors of four that add to five? One and four. One and four. They're both positive, so that would be D. Again, look at your answer choices to help you. All of our answer choices have four and one. It just depends on the signs. So we need four plus one to add up to five. Same thing with number four. All of our answer choices have three and seven. So two factors of 21 that are going to add to negative 10 will be 3 and 7. It just depends on the sign. For number 5, we start with a number that's not 1. So we have to multiply the first times the last. We get 12. Two factors of 12 that add to negative 13 would be negative 12 and negative 1. So we have x minus 12 and x minus 1. But when we start with multiplying, we have to remember to divide. So this would be x minus 3. And if it doesn't divide, we move it in front of the x. So 4x minus 1. So that would be answer choice A. One way that you can check your work for these types of questions is foil it out. Look at your answer choices, and you can foil it to work backwards. For 7, this is the difference of squares. So it factors into 4 minus m and 4 plus m. So that would be answer choice D. For number 10, it says, what value of A would make the graph open up? We need A to be positive if it's going to open up. So that would be D. For 11, which quadratic function has a vertex of negative 3, 5? So a vertex comes from what we add on the inside and what we add on the outside, but we change the sign of the inside. So that would be plus 3 and plus 5. To determine if the function's even, odd, or neither, you want to plug in 2 and negative 2. If you get the same answers, 
that means that it's even. If you get opposite answers, that means that it's odd. And if you get totally different answers, that would be neither. Solving the equation, to get rid of the squared, you take the square root. What do we have to remember when we take the square root of both sides? Plus or minus. Don't forget the plus or minus. Let's do 16. So here we're factoring. When we have four terms, we factor by grouping. So you group the first two, group the second two. Take the GCF out of each group. So in our first group, our GCF would be 2y to the second power. When we divide that out of our first group, we're left with y minus 4. Second group, we take the GCF out, which would be 5, and we're left with y minus 4. So we group the two insides together. y minus 4 would be one of our factors. And then the other one, the two outsides go together. So 2y squared plus 5. That would be our answer. So when you have four terms, you factor by grouping. Twenty nine through thirty one. Describe the transformation. What is a negative out front due to our graph? It's a reflection. What about when we multiply by one third? Is that a stretch or a shrink? Shrink, because it's less than one. And then when we subtract four. On the outside when we subtract, we go down four. When we graph for 32, 33, just plug in points to graph. 35 to find the vertex. It's what we're adding on the inside and what we're adding on the outside. But we always change the sign of the inside, so it'd be 5, 1. What would our vertex be for 36? Three comma zero, awesome. What we're adding on the inside, which is three, and we're not adding anything on the outside, so zero. Thirty-seven through thirty-nine, you're graphing, so just plug in numbers. Forty through forty-two, solving the equation. Remember, when you take the square root of both sides, you have to put plus or minus. Same thing with forty-three and forty-four. And same thing with the last page, too. Any questions? Let's do 48, just to practice one of these. So we want to get the x squared all by itself. So we divide both sides by 5. 80 divided by 5 would be 16. Then what would we do next? 16 is equal to x squared. Awesome, we square root it. So x is equal to what? Just 4 plus or minus 4. Awesome.